Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and to today's video review. What I have here is a collaboration piece. You may have already seen the unboxing video of this that I did earlier. This is made available courtesy of Jody and the Just One More Watch channel. Uh, so guys, head over to his channel and check it out. Give him your support and subscribe. Uh, I reckon they do some fantastic work. He's got a very in a nice field that he's developed for the channel and it is certainly becoming very popular. Uh, so thanks again Jody for making this available for this review. What I have here today of course is the Seiko 5 SNZ G13 Seiko 5 model style uh, of a field design military watch. Uh, now uh, for those who don't know um, and this is something I found out not so long ago. Uh, the Seiko 5 uh, name actually has a meaning behind it and that refers to five uh, particular features. Uh, first one being automatic mechanical movement. Second being a day date display for all their watches. Third being a water resistance rating of some form and now that, that varies throughout the uh, range. Some being 200 or more. Uh, this one particularly being a 100 meter water resistant watch. Uh, fourth feature being a Diaflex mainspring, supposedly uh, I, I guess an unbreakable very tough mainspring. And then lastly the fifth feature being shock resistance design and Seiko calls it Dia shock design. I don't know whether that's more superior to other uh, shock designs uh, but that's that's what they've built in to every Seiko 5 and that, that's really quite remarkable for what you have to pay for Seiko 5 watches you know this watch being around 110 US dollar mark you're getting quite a lot of stuff in there uh, notwithstanding the Seiko brand name which is a you know a fantastic horological name possibly the best and most uh, I guess most established and historic name coming out of Japan um, now this movement in here is the 7S36 uh, that you can see on the display back there. Nothing too special, it is a 21600 beat per hour movement, not a very new movement, 23 joules, 40 hour reserve. It does have the quick set uh, day date display there and you can see it's pleasantly uh, presented in a black disc with white uh, lettering there in this model to match the, the black dial. Uh, but it is a non-winding, non-hacking movement. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're, you're getting a 7S series movement. Uh, they are going to be non-winding, non-hacking. Uh, the case is, you, you can already see, it's going to be 316L steel, of course, from Seiko at this level. Uh, it is 42 millimeter across in diameter. Uh, this particular design is 11.8 millimeters on the thickness so just shy of 12 millimeters uh, on the wrist there 22 millimeter lugs of course which lends it extremely well to swapping out for NATO and, and this particular design uh, you, you gotta try swapping it out don't you that, that military style design it is just crying out to be swapped out for NATO's uh, if you know if you ever own some watches like this uh, the the case back you can you've seen already that it's screw in you've seen the the display you know why should you display a 7s 36 well at least it's an automatic movement yes it is pretty much an entry level movement but it is uh, it is automatic and mechanical uh, and and just keep in mind you know four hundred and ten dollars you probably don't expect a display back so they've thrown that in there uh, so good on them for for pushing that in. Uh, it is a plain unsigned crown that you can see there in the three o'clock position. Uh, it doesn't screw in and the water rating you've seen already is 100 meters for this watch. Uh, the dial, right, just take a look at it. it it's, it's a pleasingly matte black, I would have to say, um, you know, with military style numerals. So you get that uh, ring of 1 to 12 Roman numerals and then just inside you have smaller print uh, 24 hour scale which is a very common theme you find on military uh, field style watches or, or even uh, I guess going toward aviator style design watches. Uh, there is a raised chapter ring 
around that circle of numbers. You can see it's it's raised, and it, it gives it gives it a nice bit of depth, I think, uh, and you know adds a, uh, I guess a bit of drawing in uh, to the center of the watch there. Uh, and you know the the hands you can see already is kind of like the this kind of picket fence style baton hands uh, with an arrow for the second hand that has a red tip there. Uh, now the loom on this watch, uh, of course it's Lumi Bright. The the loom is actually on the uh, chapter ring hour markings uh, along with that uh, triangle at the twelve o'clock position there, uh, as well as on the hands. It, it, those numbers, those are actually not loomed. Uh, so that, that gives a very different appearance at night. You're not going to see any numbers, you're just going to see hashes for the hour markings there. Uh, the, the crystal is hard lex, of course, uh, with you know just about all of Seiko watches around this price range. It's going to be a hard lex crystal, and in this case it is a flat hard lex. Um, Case-wise, um, uh, you know, I'll just mention, uh, you can see it's circular brushing, right, on the case, on the bezel transitioning nicely onto polish side and the, the bezel also has a ring of polish uh, all around the side as well as the case on that, that flat surface you see there. Um, somewhat, uh, I guess, uh, jarringly, the bracelet actually has longitudinal brushing. So, you know, it doesn't quite match the case uh, as, as you see that transition there. Uh, but, you know, it's fairly standard longitudinal brush there and then polished on the side there with push pin adjustment uh, for the links that you can take out. So it's not going to be screw links at this price range. Uh, the class is pretty standard Seiko. You know, it's got a sign there. It's got a triple release, uh, but it's pressed metal and it doesn't have, you know, of course, it doesn't have an ex extension in the in the military fuel watch. They're, they're not, they don't tend to have extension features there because uh, there's no reason to expect that. Okay, so that's, that's the overview of the watch. What I have enjoyed about this, well, you're getting pretty good Seiko value for $110, you know, in a field aviator style military design. Uh, this particular model does seem to have a very loyal fan base. It's been around for quite a few years now and it's selling, you know, continually uh, and it, people do seem to like this particular design I mean you got the SNK models for the the smaller uh, automatic entry level uh, but if you want a bigger one 42 millimeter you're gonna you're gonna want to go to for something like this one uh, and, and it's a fantastic example of a purely functional form I think you know that there's nothing extraneous about this you know except maybe that display on the back uh, that there's nothing superfluous about this. It just everything has a form uh, that that uh, dictates its function. You know, like I mean, you know, there, there's a military numerals. There's a loom on the uh, chapter ring there. It's very legible. You know, just black and white. Nothing uh, higher in terms of contrast you can achieve there. Uh, it, it's you know, it's just right there to tell the time and to allow you to read it very easily. Because it's directly, uh, I guess, dictating uh, function, uh, the, this form is, is versatile. I think it's very quiet, uh, boring even. And so, you know, you can swap it out to leather and it will, you know, it will just go with you in many, many different circumstances. You know, swap it out to the appropriate strap or bracelet. You can, you can almost make this uh, go with anything, I think. Now, cons, what I've found uh, slight weaknesses, and this is, of course, you know, some of this is nitpicking. The main one is it doesn't hack. Now, this is supposed to be a military style watch. And if you're serious about military styling and function, well, you need to hack. You know, part of the function of the, uh, the, the, the precise timing that they used to have was needing to synchronize the time with your compadres, with your teammates. Now, this watch doesn't do that, so you know that that's almost a betrayal of the function. I find, you know, in, in terms of putting a seven S movement in this one. Secondly, I'll say the Seiko Five branding. Now, purists will say that that's a uh, detraction. That that's a minus. You know, you you have Seiko, and that's enough. And if you put a five in there, that's a, a double branding, and that that's superfluous and you know, that's a negative. Uh, take an example of uh, 
you know, the prospects line, anything that's branded prospects, it, people just seem to hate, you know, they prefer a DAO that doesn't have that with the exact same model otherwise. Uh, that may not be as big a thing with Seiko 5, but you know, that, that's something I thought I'd mention. And then lastly, I would say is something very subjective for me because this thing is so purely, you know, defined by its, its uh, function. I find it a little bit dry. I find that character wise, it, it you know, it, it lacks a certain degree of character that many other uh, of my automatic watches have. You know, it's very straight up and down. A lot of the design is, you know, straight angles or just plain circles. So, you know, I, I guess some people may find this a little bit too dry. Um, you know, I think there's enough detail on the dial going there to to add uh, interest but you know that's just a feeling uh, that i've gotten from this watch and, and that's not to, to take away uh from any of all the other excellent uh, characteristics that it has you know so much that it offers for the price range uh, you know that there's a lot to be said about this model and many other seiko 5 models so don't let me put you off because of uh, you know that that subjective input of mine so guys thank you for watching uh, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing. You know, I put out content every week. I'm learning new things about horology all the time. And I always try to present objective, unbiased information right here on the channel. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you to uh, Just One More Watch and Jody for making this available again. And as always, I will catch you next time.